What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony, and I want to welcome you guys. This is the second episode for a short series, which I used to do a lot of series, but I just stopped doing series. But this specific series, um, I believe it was from the Lord, and it is something that is going to pivotly change the way that we walk in life because ultimately whenever we receive understanding from God it should change that's what repentance means repentance doesn't mean for you to you know go to the altar time and time again true repentance and this is how the new testament this is how ministry under grace is is that as you're listening to the word of God you are being a challenged in your thinking why Because Hebrews 4.20 says the word of God cuts between your soul and your spirit. So you come to a crossroads every time you listen to the word of God. You're either going to side with your preconceived notions that are programmed in your soul. Or you're going to side with the word of God, which the truth is in your spirit. So repentance is such that... When you listen to a minister preach about grace and Jesus and his wonderful finished work, it changes you not by you implementing steps. It changes you not by you out of your effort cutting specific habits, but it transforms you from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians, as you behold Jesus. The minister, as I unveil Jesus, The listener, as you behold Jesus, you are blessed and you are changed from glory to glory. And that's repentance. That's growth. That's repentance. And that's what we endeavor to do here at Truth Ministries is to preach Jesus, to preach his finished work, to talk about grace. And as we do so, lives are changed. People are are freed and delivered from long-term habits. People are healed emotionally, physically, in their relationships. Hearts are healed from bitterness. Hearts ultimately are softened. And and that's probably such a a wonderful understanding that as I've grown in the Lord, that is something that is so important. Is a soft heart. Is a heart that is you know, Solomon says that God has gifted me with a large heart. And I'm all, I'm like, wait, what does he mean? A large heart means a heart who's hungry, a heart who craves the word of God. And I want to congratulate you because I know for a fact that as a truth family listener, you have a large heart. You are hungry to know about your Savior, Jesus. You're hungry to know about the word of God. You're hungry to know about grace and how you're righteous and to learn about your identity. And as you learn about your identity, you are transformed. And I want to I want to leave the introduction with this last point, talking about identity. Right, this is so important. I don't want you to miss this. If you realize in the epistles, the Pauline epistles, Paul, those that ba- that basically means the uh, letters to the churches that Paul wrote by the Spirit, Pauline epistles. Paul by the Spirit. Whenever he because I I just finished reading Ephesians today. Whenever he corrects. Or says, flee fornication. Or he says, therefore, get rid of any filthy talk. Or therefore, flee youthful lust. Or any type of, that's what, the, that's, what, that's what this English word is, imperative. That's what imperative, it means in action. Do this. That's what imperative means. But before that, I've realized that part by the Spirit, the way that he ministers by the Holy Spirit is that he first tells, for example, Dre, you are righteous. You are a king. You are a queen, my love. You are holy. You are a complete new creation in Christ. You're rich. You are royalty. You are a new generation. You are a peculiar breed. You have been set apart for the Lord Jesus. And because you are righteous, Dre, because you have been made holy and blameless in the sight of God, because 
you are new. Therefore, flee bitterness, flee fornication, flee filthy talk, flee being angry with your brothers and sisters. But it, but we, we, we kind of have it backwards. We say, you're not righteous until you stop doing these things. But New Testament, new ministry of grace is such that, hey, Dre, you are righteous. You are holy. You are a saint. You are clean. The blood of Christ has made you a new creation. This is who you are. And because this is who you are, therefore, act out. This is faith with works. People want to talk about faith with works. This is faith with works. Is I tell you by the Spirit of God that you are righteous forever. You are holy. You are blameless. You are a new creation. Hey, you don't have the spirit of fear anymore. You have a sound mind. Hey, you are not sick anymore. You are actually the healed. So because you are the healed, therefore, get up out of that wheelchair. Because you don't have a timid spirit, because you do not have the spirit of timidity, therefore, be bold for Christ. Because you are righteous, you shouldn't be smoking that cigarette because you are righteous, my friend. You, but you, you see, it's very like, it's very subtle because we can get into works and, you know, the intentions are good. I would say, I, I would hope so, that we want that the majority of ministers want to preach, you know, holiness. The, I, I would say 75% of, of the ministers, their intention is good. They're just ignorant. But the way that holiness manifests in the body of Christ is when you preach the finished work. Because what happens is that, and this is so subtle, I'm, I'm going deep into it before I get into today's topic. But what happens is that if you teach someone, if you tell them and preach to them, Dre, hey, you need to stop doing this. What you are saying, inevitably, is you're not a new creation. You're not bearing witness to the truth. You are saying you're not there yet. So do to become. And in the very doing, you are proceeding from a false premise. Because the false premise is, hey, you're not holy yet. Hey, you don't have a sound mind yet. Hey, you are not truly a new creation. Hey, you are not sick anymore. You're actually still kind of sick, so get healed. You are not healed and you don't have a sound mind, so stop being timid. So what happens is that if we preach works, what happens is that the believer, instead of a revelation of their new identity in Christ and understanding and seeing with the eyes of their heart who they truly are, and because you see who you truly are, you begin to act as if. For example, and this is a big example and take a deep breath before I take before I set this example already. If a believer <clears throat> who got saved, let's say they were in homosexuality before, they get saved. I talk to this brother or sister now in Christ, and I say, "You're not homosexual. You're you're not a homosexual. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are clean." You are holy. You are a new creation. But in that new believer's head, there's still the lust. There's still the desires. There's still the memories, right? So what to do is what we must do is preached is preach the finished work that hey you don't have to res you don't have to do those things to become you have become and because you have become act as if that is walking by faith because i can guarantee you those memories will still be there those feelings will still will still be there but if you walk according to those feelings and those memories you're walking inevitably by sight and not by faith but when we preach hey you are a new creation another example Let's say a, a brother, this is a very common example. He was a drug addict before he got saved. Now he's saved. In his head, he's still a drug addict. So what we, what we must do as 
the church is to preach the truth. You are not a drug addict anymore, brother. Yes, you used to be in Christ, but brother, you are now the righteousness of God by faith, not because of your works, but you just are. That's grace. Grace is, it is finished. There's nothing for you, brother, to do to be the righteousness of God. But because you are the righteousness of God, you don't have that, you don't have that addiction anymore. But I feel those urges, Anthony. Those are the, you, you ever, I was, we were at dinner the other day. Remember, Dre, with, um, with Kim and Ethan, shout out to you guys. And we were at a uh, hibachi and they shared with me because I guess Kim grew up in a, in a farm that if you cut a chicken's head off, their body is still kind of like the, the muscles are there. The electricity in the muscles are still there. So they run around, but the body is dead. Listen to what I'm saying by the spirit. The chicken's head is cut off. It's dead, but the body is still running around. Question, is it alive? No, it's dead. So what is left of the old creation is those impulses and those feelings and memories. Is it alive? No, it's dead. Reckon yourself dead indeed to sin. Reckon yourself dead to that lifestyle. Put on the new man. Where? By your actions, no, in your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man. So this is how transformation happens, is I preach to a believer, friend, whether you were uh, in, in the homosexual lifestyle, whether you were a drag addict, whether you were a prostitute, whether you were a drug dealer, it doesn't matter. All things have become new. And because you have become new, walk it out. But I don't feel it. But as the leopards walked, they were healed as they went. That's faith. That is faith right there. Is to deny the feelings. I feel these urges. I feel these memories. No, no, but I am a new creation. So I begin to act it out. I begin to walk it out. Act as if because it has become. So we're talking about new creation we're talking about ministry and I, I just began to flow with the spirit so that was that this was good because this is how transformation this is walking by faith this is new testament ministry of grace is i don't preach works i preach your identity and when the person becomes convinced that they are what i am telling them they are if i'm new then why do i why do i why the heck do would i ever need that bottle if I'm new, why the heck would I need those pills? Because if this man, this is what happens. This is what happened in the book of Acts when Paul by the Spirit was preaching the new creation, the finished work. Remember, the new creation is a product of the finished work. You see the new creation, how? Through the cross. Through Christ crucified. Paul was preaching Christ crucified. And in preaching Christ crucified, he preached that, friend, you were dead in Christ. And now you are resurrected with Christ. And you are seated at the right hand of God. And because you believe you are the righteousness of God, you are a new creation. Identity, identity, finished work, finished work. To the point where this man who was born lame, Paul perceived by the Spirit that he had faith to be healed. And he said, since you are the healed since you are seated at the right hand of God, since you are a new creation, stand up on your feet. And that man who was lame from his birth stood up on his feet. How? Because he saw in his heart his new identity. And when you see your identity, you begin to act as if. You begin to walk it out. But this is the walk of faith because the walk of faith is that I don't, I don't feel new. I don't, I don't have... The memories are still there of the old creation. I don't feel peace. I feel angry. I feel fearful. I feel afraid. I still have these symptoms. How are you telling me I'm new? That is faith. But the minute you act it out, that's works. That's faith by works. The minute you begin to act it out, 
you are bearing witness to the truth that you are a new creation. And when you bear witness to the truth, guess who is there to bear witness of the truth with signs, wonders following? The Holy Spirit, which is called the Spirit of Truth. So this is a glimpse of New Testament ministry. And we're talking about the church today. We're talking about the importance and the, the, the mystery of the church today. And I wanted to begin to address this because in this series, we're kind of debunking and tackling, tackling a lot of the like uh, stigmas. You know, like let's say if you had a bad steak or something, right? You try steak for the first time and you didn't like it, but steak is actually really good. So then when you go into, let's say you go to... Um, Mortons or Flemings or you go to Mastro's or Texas of Brazil or any type of your local steakhouse. You you still have that bad taste in your mouth, but it might have just been that the cook sucked. <laughs> it might have just been that the cook didn't know what they were doing. So do not get rid of steak in your life. I'm just trying to make a natural illustration. Don't just write off steak because you had a lousy cook who didn't know what he was doing or didn't marinate enough or whatever. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're talking about the importance of church. And I've become, I've come to realize because even in my own personal life, that the minute that we are delivered in our minds out of law into grace, we begin to throw out every single thing. We begin to throw out tongues. Why pray in tongues? Why pray in general? Why tithe? I'm going to be talking about that soon. Why go to church? which we're talking about today. Why submit to my pastor? Why, why even call him pastor? Why can't I just call him bro? Which we talked about in the previous episode. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think it's very, I think it's normal, honestly. I think it's normal. And, and, and that's why there's no condemnation, but rather there's compassion and wisdom to be imparted. Because, for example, let's say if you grew up in a, in a very legalistic household, you had an angry dad, who just yelled at you for everything. And this happens a lot. You went to a private school and the minute you get the minute you turn 18, you get out of you go to college and you just go crazy. Why? Because you, freedom, like I said, unveils your true heart. If you could, you would have gone crazy under your parents' household. But because they were so legalistic, you were afraid of getting kicked out. Now that you are free. You get what I'm saying? Now that you are free, your true intentions are manifested in your life. And there's correction and admonition in grace. So today we're talking about the importance and the mystery of the church. One amazing shadow type, <clears throat> type in shadow from the Old Testament of the church, which is such a beautiful, beautiful illustration that it hit me like a ton of bricks, is Adam and Eve. Adam, the Bible even says in the epistles, who Adam, who was a type of the one that was to come, the second Adam, our Lord Jesus. The Bible calls him the second and the last Adam. Adam needed to be put to sleep. And when he was put to sleep, Eve came out of his side. Jesus, when he died, when he was put to sleep, when he died on the cross, not only for you, but as you, Adam was put to sleep and Eve came out of his side. The Lord Jesus, our precious Savior and Lord Jesus, was put to sleep and out of his side came gushing blood and water, the birth of his wife, his bride, the church. Did you see that? Joseph, a type and shadow of our Lord Jesus Christ, rejected by his earthly brothers. Much like Jesus, Jesus was rejected by the majority of Israel. Was sold into slavery and captivity into Egypt. And the Bible says he was made the bread of life for Egypt. Egypt became rich spiritually and physically. Why? Because of Joseph. 
So Joseph is a type of Jesus. He was rejected by his brothers Israel. And now he was the bread of life. He is the bread of life for the Gentiles, Egypt, us, you and me. Not only that, but we see a type that, jo that Joseph married a Gentile bride. So the church, my friend, and we're gonna the majority that we're gonna sit on today is Ephesians chapter three. The church is the mystery of God. So much so that the Bible says that the prophets which prophesied with the Spirit of Christ that was upon them, they prophesied of this mystery, and they were like the Old Testament prophets. They were prophesying about Blessed, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will never impute sin. Blessed is the man who, whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is the man who has redeemed him from the curse of the law. Who, and all these wonderful benefits that we preach. But do we realize that the Old Testament prophets were prophesying by the Spirit of Christ upon them about the church? That the Old Testament prophets did not even understand all these benefits. Who were these benefits for? For the church. For the new creation. Ephesians chapter 2 says that he removed the middle wall of partition. The enmity. Which is the law written in ordinances to make the Bible says and thus making peace creating one new man as far as the eyes of God go there is only three types of human races human species because if if we let's grow up and realize that there's only Gentiles the Jews Israel and the church of God. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, do not offend. Don't offend either the Jews. Don't offend the Gentiles. Neither the church of God. In the eyes of God, there's only three human species. The church, which is taken from Gentiles and Jews. The Gentiles and Jews. The, Jew, the Gentiles don't have, don't have any type of covenant with God. The Jews still have a covenant with God. The, the Jews are still God's people, which will be redeemed. Romans chapter 11 says, do not be ignorant, for all of Israel shall be redeemed. So, that should tell you whose side you should be on during every single chaotic wars that are going on. But my point is that in the eyes of God, there's only three types of species. And this third one, the church of God, is such, was such a mystery that if we begin to just be remissive about it, it is a unintelligent thing to do. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Let's look into this. Ephesians 3 says this. I'm going to start at verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Paul was called to the Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me for you. Realize that any true minister, I was telling my team this the other day, ministers are not celebrities or influencers. We were at church this past weekend, and I was so happy to see the teaching pastor who was teaching that Sunday service. Before the service, he was just walking around with a cup of coffee, talking to the congregation. Well, Anthony, did he have two bodyguards around him? He had none. He was just walking around. Not even he he didn't even have an entourage. He was, he was he was just walking around. Ministers are not celebrities or influencers. The Bible says you have heard of this grace. Grace is unworked for. Why would you boast? How can I, Anthony, how can I boast about the ministry God has given to me or the grace that God has given to me if I did nothing to earn it? It's a gift. In fact, when you realize that as a minister, it will humble you to the ground, realizing that it is none of you. That in the midst of your wreckedness, in the midst of your darkness, in the midst of your fleshly anarchy rebellion, God chose you, listener, and he blesses you by grace, not because of your works. 
So Paul, by the Spirit, said, You have heard of this abundance of grace that is given to me. Why? So that I can be on this famous Christian network? No. The Bible says, This grace was given to me for you. And that's another important statement because far too many times we cannot neglect the fivefold ministry. The Bible says these are gifts by Jesus for the edifying of the church, for the perfecting of the saints, comma, for the work of ministry, comma, for the edifying of the body of Christ, comma, until we all come to a perfect man. Notice how each section starts with four, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The fivefold ministry is a gift from Jesus. So let's, let's move on. Verse 3, how that by revelation, now we're talking about the, min, the mystery of the church, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I have wrote afore in a few words. Verse 4, whereby when you read, you might understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages, listen to this, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of, of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who I am less than the least of all saints is this grace given. Notice the humility in Paul's, in Paul's voice. He said this grace, he said that three times. I'm made a minister according to grace. I'm made a minister by a gift. Not for me, but for you. Unto me who I am least than all the saints, is this grace given? You would think, and I don't have anything to do, I don't have anything against Bible schools, but you would think the Bible would say, I am made a minister according to the Bible school diploma that I have. That's not it. There's nothing wrong with Bible school. You can go to Bible school if you feel called to, but listen to what it says. I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me verse 8 unto me who i am least than all the saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery from which from the beginning of the world has been hidden in god who created all things by jesus christ to the intent that now unto the prince of power principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to park it there. To the intent, this mystery is the body of Christ, the church, to the intent that now Onto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. They might know the manifold wisdom of God. How? By the church. According to the eternal, this is an eternal purpose. Which was purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Bible goes on to say that the church is the body of Christ. The Bible says, this is a great mystery, but the two shall be one flesh. For we are, we are of his body. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. This is a great mystery, but I speak pertaining Christ and the church. And the two shall be one flesh. A great mystery. This mystery, the Bible says, to the intent that the church, the Bible calls the church, the pillar of truth, might preach the manifold wisdom of God. I love that. The church, the church's intent is to preach the manifold wisdom of God 
to powers and principalities in heavenly places. It does not say the church is to preach politics. The church is to preach New Ageism. The church is to preach self-confidence. The church is to preach how to grow whatever, fill in the blank. The intent is that the church might make known the wisdom of God, not only to the believers, but to, this is crazy, to principalities and powers in heavenly places. That is why, think about this, the angels, the Bible says in, in another portion in the scriptures, in the New Testament, in First Peter, that even angels desire to look into, into the salvation that has come to men. The angels desire to learn about this grace that was given to mankind. That is why a type of the Ark of the Covenant, which is the Lord Jesus, you see two cherubims looking where? Into the mercy seat. That when I preach, when the, many other churches and ministers, when we all preach the grace of God, because the cherubims are angled as such that they're looking into the mercy seat. First Peter says that angels desire to look into this matter. Angels desire to learn about grace, about salvation, about Jesus, about his finished work. That when a man or a woman of God begins to preach the finished work of Jesus, when we preach Jesus, when we preach about this grace that the Old Testament prophets prophesied with the Spirit of Christ that was upon them, that has came forth to us, to you, when we preach this is the manifold wisdom of God, not only that the angels are looking into this matter, but we preach the manifold wisdom of God to powers and principalities in heavenly places. The great mystery and the two shall be one flesh, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, that just in the same exact way that Adam had to be put to sleep, our Lord Jesus had to be put to sleep, that out of his side came forth the church, out of Adam's side came forth Eve, and the two shall be one, for you are the temple of the living God, you are the body of Christ. That you should preach the manifold wisdom of God. This great mystery that angels desire to look into. That the Bible says that we have a great cloud of witnesses in heavenly places. That the Old Testament prophets, those who have gone before us, are looking down from heaven. When we preach Jesus, not politics, when we preach Jesus, when we preach about his great work that he has finished on the cross, when we preach about salvation, when we preach about the mercy seat, the grace of God, how wonderful salvation is, how perfect the blood of Jesus Christ is, is that the entirety of heaven, like a football game, begins to look down and Paul himself sits down and Peter himself sits down. And when a man of God, when a woman of God preaches the finished work of the cross, when he preaches Jesus, when he unveils Jesus in the Old Testament, who was in the types, who was in the shadows, when Jesus Christ is at the center and we preach the finished work of the cross, that angels, we have a, we have a whole audience. So even in the studio, it might just be me and Dre, but I am aware, I am conscious that heavenly beings are listening in. Why? Because you're such a great man of God? No, no, no. Because I just simply preach about Jesus and his wonderful, wonderful grace. This grace is a mystery. How could, what is man, the Bible says, what is man that, that you would come down, that a perfect creator would come down? What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that God is so lo in love with? What is man that Jesus Christ is so in love with mankind that he would come down from heaven into a corrupt and decay world and die on the cross, become obedient unto death? What is man that the love of God is, is, not, is not even towards celestial beings? But towards mankind, what is man that you are so mindful of him? The psalm says. 
that you would come down from your throne, O God, that you would become obedient, that you would have you would become so humble and obedient that you would allow yourself to be changed as a baby. Your diapers would be changed. Your butt would be wiped as a baby. I think we forget Jesus is the son of the living God and he is God in the flesh, but he is also fully man. He had to allow himself to to be fed by his parents at a certain age, to be changed by his parents. And yet, we can't even submit to those who have been set over us to guide us. So this body of Christ is the church. And I want to talk about, because there is a lot of questions, because I preach radically on grace, I would hope so, and I preach radically on do not mix law and grace. So, one of the questions that we would have, let's say, is, is there's a, there's a, a, actually a couple questions that I'm going to tackle. But I'm going to begin to, before I get into the questions, I want to really preach and teach that the important that, that the body of Christ, listen, the body of Christ is never going to be perfect. The Bible says into the perfect day. The body of Christ is never going to be perfect because it's made up of imperfect people. You have people who are in different stages, different walks. You have baby Christians. You have people that grew up in a rough neighborhood that just got saved, that needs time, that needs nurturing, that needs, that needs shepherding, that needs grace, that needs help. You have all these different types of people, and that's the beauty. That is the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, to mankind, m me and, and any other type of mankind, we would choose the the most beautiful, the most perfect, the tallest, tall, dark, handsome, no flaws, perfectly strong, everything. But God's ways is such that in in the weak things, in the abased things, in about the the outcast, the alcoholics, the drug addicts, that God's grace is made perfect in people's weaknesses. The mystery of God. So let's tackle these questions, shall we? One by one. Dre, I think you have one of the first questions. Yeah, what if they are preaching grace mixed with law? She said, what if they are mixing, what if they are teaching mixed, mixture, so grace and law? Listen, and that is why I said what I said, that no church is going to be perfect. Blessed are your eyes for they see. And blessed are your ears for they hear. You see grace. You see Jesus. You see, just like we explained with Adam and Eve, you see Jesus. So blessed are your eyes and blessed are your ears. The Bible says in the book of Romans, talking about uh, the stronger and the weaker brethren, the Bible says, therefore, those that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. What does that mean? Those who are strong in the Lord should be patient with those who are younger and weak in the Lord. We were having dinner and we were talking about this. It's in the same exact way that a big brother, a big brother, for example, he learns how to run. He learns, he, he, he goes from crawling to walking to running. Now that he knows how to run, it would be very un unintelligent for the man or for the young kid who knows how to run now to go and look at his baby brother who's still crawling and saying, you're so stupid. Why don't you run? You see my legs moving? Your legs are still on the floor. You're not a real baby. You're not a real man. Why do you, why, what are you doing crawling? Why can't you run like me? Don't you see these legs moving so fast? I'm like Speedy Gonzalez. What are you doing? Like, the Bible says that we that are strong. And this, this is why. And I'm answering that question very directly right now. This is why the, we that are mature and grown in the Lord, maturity and being grown in the Lord is not shown or seen, I would say, by miracle signs and wonders. Again, like I said, we need it, but miracle signs and wonders, the gift of working of miracles is a gift. A true sign, a fruit of the Spirit, 
when you have come to the understanding about grace and Jesus, but yet you are still patient with those who are very stubborn and still in law. Now to answer the question directly, because I'm talking about it's important for us to be plugged, in, plugged into a local church. If the church is preaching grace and law, I personally would say that it's going to be very difficult to find a church that preaches pure grace. I understand that. I've been there, trust me. That's why it took me so long to even talk about this. And that is why, if you guys didn't know, that Truth Ministries is not only going to, it's not only currently, we're in an evangelistic ministry. But the vision is such that we are going to be planting churches throughout Los Angeles County and more. That's the vision. So, but in the meantime, it is important to be plugged into a church. I would say for, for, for you, if you get fed on our podcast episodes, if you get fed listening to Joseph Prince, if you get fed listening to any minister of true grace that you're listening to, then get fed. I personally, my wife and I, we go to a local church not because, you know, their their teaching is just marvelous and I just get blessed. No, I'm patient. I understand that there's going to be, you know, little to no churches that maybe, you know, preach. And that's changing. That preach, you know, true grace, raw grace, like completely no works, like completely. But realize that when you go to church, I would say if you're the mature believer, you would go to church to see what you can do to help them, not how you how they can help you. You see the little shift that how you what you can do to bless them, what you can do to help them, what you can do to go and have fellowship with them, what you can do to go and because when I when we went to church on Sunday, I, I mentioned the story in the previous episode. When I went there, there was something very spectacular. The, the church is beautiful, but there was something spectacular. But yet, I still felt the love of God. Why? Because my eyes were open, and I began to see the beauty of every person that was walking by. What are you saying, Anthony? Would, would you at a beauty pageant? No, I began to be spiritual, bro. I began to see the beauty that Jesus Christ died for every single person that was walking around in that lobby. I began to see the body of Christ. I began to see that, dang, Jesus freaking loves these people. Jesus loves every person here. He loves every person here. And my eyes were open to that. So I would say, one, yes, it's probably going to be a little bit challenging. But as long, I would say, as long as they're not preaching full law, I would say just go there. But be mature enough to real to discern the difference and that is this is a very very and that's why i was hesitant to even talk about this i'm just being open right now and i'm just right now it's kind of like a q a as you can tell the the atmosphere kind of shift a little bit it took me a while to even like address these things because before i would say absolutely if they if they even talk if they even hint about works cut them off but now as i've grown because the Lord's helped me, I would say as long as they're not against grace, as long as they're, because the church that we were at before, I mean, whatever, I'm going to say it. The church that we were at before, they would preach hard against grace. As long as they're not preaching against grace, as long as they, like for instance, the church that we go to, there's still a little bit of works there, but they preach about Jesus. They talk about Jesus. They talk about, you know, grace and, you know, there's a little bit there, but I mean, I, I am able to discern what's works and what's grace. So I just throw the, the, the uh, seeds out, but I eat the watermelon. And again, I don't go there to, you know, honestly, I don't go there necessarily to get fed. I'm open to like hear what the Lord helps, you know, helps me to hear. But I'm not, that's not like, that's not my, uh, my steak and potatoes, I go there because I understand the importance of the body of Christ. And I go there, honestly, to see what I can do to help the community there, to see what doors the Lord opens. Well, I see you're going there just so you can preach. No, I'm talking about what doors will people need help with. If I'm able to, let's say if I run into someone that the Lord brings and they've been tormented in their mind and I pray for them or plug them in, whatever it is, like you, you, 
you begin to grow and you've realized that you have shifted from the Bible says we realize that we are have passed from death to life. Why? Because we love the brethren. That is very interesting that Jesus would say that. That we real that we realize that we have come from death to life. Why? Well, because I pray in tongues. <laughs> no. The Bible says you realize you've come from death to life when you love the brothers and sisters. Jesus, but they're not perfect. Yeah. So was any of the churches in the book of Revelation, but yet Jesus called them his church. When he addressed the different churches, the seven different churches in the book of Revelation, Jesus appeared unto them and he still, the, well, the pastor, he, he was talking to the pastor and he still called them my church. He still called even the, he still called the church that was in, Nicol in, uh, in uh, Nicolation and all that stuff, he still called them his church. So I would say, first of all, ask the Lord Jesus for wisdom on this. Definitely ask him for wisdom. And this is my opinion. I'm speaking by opinion right now, not by the you know authority. This is this is the truth. My opinion, just like Paul said when he saw my this is my opinion, not a commandment. But my opinion is as long as they're not preaching against grace, I can bear with that. If you and number two, if you actually, if they actually feel genuine and like the love is there, because you can tell, you can tell a tense environment when everyone's suited up. You can tell a tense environment when someone's sweating, suited up, yelling. It's super uncomfortable. You feel worse than when you when you were in ninth grade, your first day in high school, walking through the through the hallway. That is how a religious church feels like. You feel like everyone's just staring at you. It's super tense, right? Like it's just like it's so judgmental. But if they like, feel it, if you go there, and you know they preach about Jesus, they're for grace. Maybe you know there's the Lord still helping them, but you like they're actually friendly and genuine. You know that I, I'd say I wouldn't throw that away. I wouldn't throw that away. I would be patient. I would throw away the seeds in the in the teachings and be vigilant. Like you know. That is why it's important for you to grow in the Lord, to listen to teachings like this, and to read the Bible, and to grow in the Lord. Because if you know the truth, it's 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 not hard for you to discern, decipher, you know what what are seeds and what are just what you can actually eat. What's the next question, Dre? What if they don't agree with specific topics, like so prosperity? Like prosperity uh, uh, Honestly, my benchmark, to be honest with you, is if they, if if they're, if you feel the love of God in there, if you feel the friendliness, if you don't feel the tense, like you, you can tell, you have the Holy Spirit in you, listener. If you don't feel the fakeness or the tenseness of it, and they preach Jesus and they preach grace, let's say they do these things, but then they preach against prosperity. Honestly. That's not a that's not a, a, a game changer for me. I, I know the truth. That's why it's important. Now, for instance, if you are still in between what what prosperity though, then begin to learn about prosperity. Begin to learn through the teachings that we do because it's unveiled at the cross. It's not unveiled by Solomon's principles to success. No, it's unveiled because the Bible says you know the grace of of our Lord Jesus, that he was made poor so that you are rich. It's at the cross that you that when you look to the cross, you see that you have been made rich. So to answer your question is if they disagree with prosperity, I, I'm okay with that. However, if they disagree with um, divine health, like if they're always preaching, you know, God will put cancer on you, I would walk away. That's a big thing. Like, I, I think... You, you listener are grown enough to discern what's a game, what's a what's a breaker, and what's not. If they're against prosperity, whatever. Like that church, they were preaching, <laughs> they were like making fun of you know preachers with jets, and I'm like whatever. I just, I mean, I got irritated personally, but now I don't care. I know the truth. I'm like, if you don't want to be rich, brother in Christ, I'll take your inheritance. That's fine. If if if, if you didn't, if you don't want a jet, that's fine. Give me it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but if they preach like that God will put sickness on you, that's a game breaker for me. I would walk away. What's another topic? Oh, 
Anthony, the, they don't pray in tongues. Honestly, that's not a game breaker for me. If they don't believe in praying in tongues, obviously, again, what are we talking about? We're talking about you getting plugged into some sort of church because it's it's the body of Christ and this is what the Lord has ordained. But realizing that you're, you can go to that church that's like 25 minutes. Let's say you go to Joe Osteen's church. I love Joe Osteen. And it's you get in and you get out. That's great. If, if you go to any type of those churches, if you want to do it, that's, I mean, that's fine. That's up to you. But you have to be mature enough that you will not stumble and fall. If you you feel in yourself that you're still young, that you might, well, I don't know, man. I, you know, then the Bible says, don't do anything against your conscience. Don't do whatever you do. Do it in faith. When we go to, the, when we go to church, like, obviously, I, I'm aware that not everyone has the understanding that Jesus has given to us. But... That's fine. I'm not gonna. Be, I'm not gonna be like a a snobby nose and be like, well, you know, they gotta they gotta cross every single dot and t because then I'm being very lawful. I'm able to bear the infirmities of the weak. You know what I'm saying? But if they preach, if again, if they preach, you know, God will put sickness on you. I'm out. If they preach, you know, I don't believe in tongues. That's fine. We can disagree on that. If they preach, well, you know, I believe that God just supplies. I mean, again. Give me your money then. If you believe that, according to your faith, brother, so be it unto you. But my faith is I actually take your money and give it to me. <laughs> you know, So that, I mean, what other topic might be breaker? Tongues, prosperity, divine health. The whole sickness is a big thing because you can get, you know, it can get in you if you're not established in it. What do you mean get in you, Anthony? Meaning not a demon spirit, first of all. Calm down. Take a deep breath. It's okay. Meaning, the Bible says, be not deceived. Bad communications corrupt good manners. Meaning, at that time, they were, t they were preaching a big, big doctrine, a blasphemous doctrine that Paul had to rebuke, saying that the resurrection has passed. That's a big, that's probably one of those big, big doctrines that I would, I, I would say, you know, I wouldn't condemn them, but I'd be like, all right, I'm going somewhere else, where they just keep it more vague. Again, we're going to church, Why? Because it's the body of Christ, and honestly, I'm not going there to receive, you know, maybe I'm I'm open to it by the Lord, but I'm not going there expecting to receive a massive revelation about grace. I'm going to, I'm going there to, to, to be in the company of fellow believers, to get a cup of coffee in the morning, you know, worship, listen to a good song, and maybe listen to 20 minutes of, you know, decent teaching, as long as they're not preaching against grace, as long as they're not saying, you know, God's going to take your son all this stuff, that's fine. I get in, I get out, I have a cup of coffee, I have fellowship with the believers, you know, and that's fine. But I get my, my, my meat from the podcast episodes, from Joseph Prince, from you, Anthony, whatever it is, that's fine. So that's that's that question. What other big topics? What if they don't believe in the rapture? That's fine. They can stay. I can, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> According to your faith. Again, these are like, I would say, uh, but again, if they start preaching like, you know, Jesus actually sent out, these are the core f tentacles of Christianity. You know, Jesus is actually, is, he's just a prophet. He's not, he's not God. Er, that's blasphemy. I'm out. You know what I mean? So you have the Holy Spirit. I believe that you, the Lord has brought us to this type of maturity level that you're able to discern, you know, which ones are non-negotiables and which ones are negotiables. Negotiables, I would say. Prosperity, that's fine. I'll t uh, you know, I'll, I'll receive your money. You don't pray in tongues, that's fine. You, I mean, there's so many benefits to praying in tongues. Uh, all right, uh, I'll, I'll receive your prosperity. Uh, you don't believe in the rapture, that's fine. You can stay down during the tribulation. I'll, I'll take your rapture too. Um, I'll hold your mansion while you're still down here, if you believe that. Um, <laughs> what else? What are the topics? Just, you know, certain things like that. Ask the Lord. Ultimately, these things are not by commandment, but by, this is just my opinion, but ultimately, you have the Holy Spirit inside you to, to guide you this way. Dang, we're almost up with time. Let's, all right, let's wrap this up. What else? Will you still receive a uh, correction from your pastor teacher that is under the law? What do you mean? Like, um, like you're going to a church and they're preaching law and he's correcting you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, honestly... I would say it's never a good idea to disrespect someone who is in authority in general. Um, but if obviously, 
if they're preaching, like I said, if they're preaching straight law, like, for example, the and again, I'm just being fully honest here. The previous church that we were at, I was just thinking about this. The Lord reminded me of this when I was driving. Um, how do I say this? We were talking about, oh, I don't know how to say it, but I'm just going to say it. So the previous church that they were saying, well, you know, one of the pastors says, well, you know, you can never out the grace of God, which is the truth. And then, the, and then someone posed a question. Someone in the in the church, I'm not gonna say who. Someone said, "Well, then who goes to hell? Those who reject Jesus." Oh, but what about sin? It's been paid for. Those who reject grace, which is Jesus, go to hell. <laughs> That's the answer. So, if they're preaching straight law again, I would say. Go to a church where they are accepting grace and maybe, you know, they don't believe in tongues. Then, yeah, you know, uh, if you're serving under someone, it's never a good idea to just reject authority to begin with. But ask the Lord. These type of questions, I'm giving you my opinion, but ultimately I want you guys, you guys are, are uh, grown children to receive wisdom from the Lord himself. Now, if, if they're preaching straight law and they're preaching against... Why did I bring that up, Anthony? We trying to start some beef now? No. <laughs> I brought that up because, as an example, if they're preaching like that, then I would say, you know what? You don't you don't go out there with, like, your middle finger up, but you just say, you know, thank you for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm searching for a new home. Leave with class. And whether they slander you, that's up to them. But leave with class. If they're preaching the example that I just said about, you know, well... What do you mean, Grace? And, and you know what? Hey, I appreciate everything you've done. Here's a gift of, here's two hundred and fifty dollars as a gift sewn into this ministry. But you know, we're gonna find a new church. You know, thank you so much. That's it. Leave with class. If they're preaching straight law, I would probably go to a church who is preaching grace and maybe doesn't believe in tongues or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But you know the truth about tongues. So you're grown and you're grown enough to to be able to throw away those seeds. So yeah, I would say it's never a good idea to reject authority, or to even like to talk back, you know, to someone. But if they're imposing and and they're trying to control you, then that's a whole different question. You know what I mean? But if they're saying, "Hey, like, why are you always late?" Then you know you might that might be something for you to ask the Lord about. You know what I mean? But if they're like controlling you, like, hey, uh, or condemning you, you haven't fasted, then, you know, you, you maybe need to move on. These are the big things. If they're condemning you, if they're, you know, hey, I saw you uh, wearing a crop top, sister. Are you even saved? Then, you know, maybe, you know, you thank you. Or you didn't show up to this revival meeting or this healing meeting or this evangelistic, you know, training, whatever. All these things, you know, if, if it's coming out of, I would say the non-negotiable is if they're preaching straight condemnation and law and guilt and control and judgmental and trauma and all these things, I will cut it off. But if they're, if you, if you, if they're, you know, if they love the Lord and obviously, you know, maybe their doctrine isn't, then you just, you, again, you don't go there to, you know, it's not, it's not like, for example, here, here's a good example. And then I close away. If I know I'm going to someone's house and all I'm going to eat is, is grapes. I'm not going to go there on a full empty stomach expecting to be fed steak and potatoes. But I would go there and, you know, and talk to the people. I would eat the grapes, spit out the seeds, go home and put on some Joseph Prince, put on some Anthony and Andrea and start to eat some meat and potatoes. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same exact way that it is, is that you just these are these are ways that of wisdom that you just learn how to decipher these things. But if they're straight condemning, if they're very into law, if you, if it's freak, if you feel so freaking stressed out and tense, find a new church. There's plenty of other churches that you can find. Um, if they're preaching, you know, for homosexuality, then obviously these are big things that I'm, I trust you're grown enough to discern. Any type of tentacles of Christianity, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, I would say grace is there. Because a, a lot of churches that preach law, you know, uh, they don't need, they can't even explain that. For example, that person who was in that church, in that church, couldn't even explain, you know, well, then who goes to hell? You answer me. 
who goes to heaven well, anyone who rejects Jesus and the gift of salvation goes to heaven not because you sin so those are like very basic questions that if they don't understand that you know and then I will say you know what here here's two hundred and fifty dollars thank you so much for for um hosting me and my family we're gonna find a new church thank I'll you take my and that's it dre said i'll take my 250 but and bounce, and bounce but you know I'll, I'll just do it because <laughs> hey the bless the lesser is greater is blessed by the greater amen so um yeah so why why did i preach this and i want to close this out right now <sighs> because again i feel that as we grow in grace as we come out of like legalistic and, and law churches i do not because i'll tell you what happens you start to say, well, you know what, you don't really have to, you know, tongues is not really, no, all that stuff. And then, oh, you know, you don't have to go to church. And, oh, you don't have to submit to authority. Oh, you know, you don't have to tithe anymore. And all these things. You're going to start to build a rebellious anarchy congregation. All because you had a bad taste in your mouth from when you were under the law, when you were in Egypt in those churches. No. Learn to grow and realize that the Bible talks a lot. A greater revelation, which we're going to be talking about in the next episode, for a couple episodes probably, the greater revelation of Melchizedek and tithing is in grace. A greater revelation about praying is in grace. A greater revelation about tongues. Man, when you pray in tongues, not to get the anointing, but you pray because... You are righteous. You pray from that position of rest where you don't have to be yelling, but just simply praying. It, it does a whole different level. When you serve, you know, grace people, I don't, I don't want to win the loss anymore. I don't want to evangelize anymore. That's works, brother. The Bible says we've been ordained for good works. So when you serve, when you evangelize from a heart of rest because you know that it's finished and there's nothing for you to do, Man, what a manifestation of the Spirit happens. All, all these things, serving. You know, most grace people don't evangelize. The only people who seem to evangelize, and then we ask why, you know, why a lot of the legalistic churches are still there, because they're out there freaking like slaves out of works and fear, you know, just talking to people and busting them in. And not that we're under grace. Yo, you, of all people, you should you should be able to step out there with a smile, with the love of God emanating, with security in your soul. And people should be able to gravitate to you because of Jesus inside of you. So I began to talk about all these things. And I'll close off right here because it's, it's so unintelligent if we begin to throw the baby out with the bathwater. The body of Christ, the church, is the mystery of God. It is the prized possession of our Lord Jesus. Praying in tongues, tithing, submitting to authority, uh, serving, evangelizing. All these things don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but rather realize that there is a greater manifestation when you do it out of rest. When you don't, when you don't go and witness because you have to, because you're afraid you're gonna make it to heaven or hell. I don't know, but you do it because you're moved with compassion and love. Why? Because you love because He first loved us. We love. We love the brethren. We love the church. We love the sinners. We love the world because He first loved us. We see how much Jesus loves us. And we've experienced, we've tangibly experienced the love of Jesus. And because we've experienced the love of Jesus, we're able to give that same love. So I want to end it right then and there. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, we want to thank you for tuning in. We pray that this quickened your heart. If you'd like to give a one-time or become a monthly partner, visit our website and hit that Give Now button up at the top. We thank you in advance and pray that you continue to receive everything God has already given you by grace through faith.